Hi, my name is Raphael Heath, the Head of Geography at the Royal High School, Bath. This is part four of a series of screencasts explaining how to conduct investigations into crime uh, using GIS. It's useful for a personal investigation, particularly at its form level. Uh, it's uh, supported by the Royal Geographical Society as part of the Innovative Teaching Grant. Um, and this one's going to be focusing on uh, conducting a little bit of analysis in ArcGIS online. If I go to where we uh, got up to in stage three before, we're talking about uh, visualizing the data in various ways, some of the tools and functionality of ArcGIS Online that you can use to play around with the data and set it up. Uh, just show you a couple of things. Uh, under this uh, uh, three dots for a particular layer, so this is the Avon crime data that we've been talking about before. I can actually copy the layer, so I can have uh, several copies of it in my map. So uh, at the moment it won't look any different because they're just sitting on top of each other. But the uh, reason for doing that is I might decide, well, I want all the dots, but I also want a heat map, which I showed you before. So I click a heat map and done. So I've got the, uh, if I unclick that, you've got the dots themselves, and then the, the heat map showing the clustering of those dots, uh, visualizing that. So they're quite useful techniques there to uh, create copies of layers, and you can rename that so it doesn't say copy uh, under the rename button into something else like heat map for Avon Crime. Um, so that's a useful technique. Uh, we're going to go on to a little bit of data analysis. Data analysis tools, everything I've showed you so far, uh, I think I'm right in saying you can do using uh, the free accounts, public accounts, and so on. Uh, we're moving into something now that you would need to have a subscription account, either that six day trial, but obviously that will then, you'll lose everything after six days if you don't subscribe. Um, uh, but you could uh, do that for a short term if uh, for free if you wanted, or uh, as an organization paid up as a school organization, uh, which isn't very expensive. So uh, if you go under analysis here, or under the layer, you've also got the similar type looking button analysis. It brings up a sub-menu here where there are various things that you can uh, do to analyze data and look at the geograph geography of your data uh, in a uh, little bit more detail. And uh, there's some good sort of uh, functionality here that's really useful for uh, higher level kind of uh, investigations uh, showing your GIS skills. So we're going to use uh, analyze patterns uh, for the moment. Um, we're going to try a couple of these. We'll go for calculate. Let's go for find hotspots first. Um, so hotspots is a statistical uh, map uh, which describes where there are clusterings in your data. So it says choose the layer you want to do the hotspot from. I've got the crime data and the crime data copy layer and another layer I put in which you can ignore for a moment. Uh, so we'll stick to that crime layer but just be aware that you're picking the right layer if you've got several layers in your maps. It says find clusters from high to low from your points. Obviously longitude latitude is not uh, what I want it to cluster on. As such just uh, all the points of the data so I had uh, different options there but that's the one I want to make sure is picked. Um, it says count points with a fishnet grid or I'll stick to that. You can. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, I could. Uh, I can ignore that. That's uh, just the way it's going to actually create a, a, a grid, or whether I um, provided a grid for it to base the hotspots on. But uh, that's uh, going to more complicated stuff. You can ignore. Um, define where points are possible. Again, that's not really relevant for the moment. Uh, Yes, it is. Uh, hidden under here. It might be easier if I make this a little bit wider. Okay, uh, where points are possible. Yeah, if I, um, let's say I, I've got lots of data in this map and it goes across the south uh, southwest area of the UK, so I only really want to analyse the hotspots in this region, this area. I want to ignore this countryside and other areas. I'm really looking at the patterns within Bath. So I can actually draw a uh, area where the points are possible, which essentially is uh, the outline of uh, the city of Bath in this case. Of course, you might be looking at a hotspot. Your local investigation might be focusing on something else specific. It might be just looking at the centre of a town uh, or a location. So uh, this will all affect how the hotspot. So I'm just going to use this sort of rough outline of Bath, uh, where the actual settlement is, as a way of defining this for the moment. So it's going to um, only create the hotspot based on the dots within this particular shape. Uh, divide by, I can ignore, uh, to give it a name, so hotspots made, uh, okay, I'll just put the word test at the end so that it uh, doesn't get muddled with all my other work. I put the folder I want to save it in, so if you've been doing a lot of GIS work, you'll have lots of different folders, uh, otherwise you won't have any folders uh, apart from your main contents. I've got lots of them, so I'll put it in test. Um, then it says use current map extend, which you should probably keep ticked. It means if you're 
it wouldn't uh, process anything on the area outside this map, but obviously it's relevant because I've got this boundary, but if I was zoomed in it would uh, only do the zoomed in area, so uh, you've got to be aware of that. Uh, show credits. Uh, as I said, this is a functionality which uh, uses you need to have a subscription for. Um, so yes, I'm not quite sure. I don't think you'll be able to do this on a free account. You will be able to do it on a 60-day trial. Yeah, I think you'll be able to do this. I think you'll have some credits. Um, but otherwise you need your uh, school organisation to have signed up for Jess Online. Um, the total records here, so it's counted there's 766 dots of crimes in May uh, in this particular shape that I've drawn. And the total credits is going to cost me is 0.766. So it's uh, not very expensive in terms of credits. Most uh, uh, subscriptions get about a thousand or more uh, when they sign up. So you can see it's not going to take a huge amount, but just be aware of that. So I click Run Analysis now. So uh, what it's going to do now is a little bit of thinking. You can see a little whirring symbol here uh, going off to some server, Esri, uh, where they're actually doing this computation for us. So it's going to create a hotspot analysis from this. This is a nice kind of higher level type of uh, analysis skills. It's actually you know, a genuine piece of analysis, a mapping analysis, statistical test on your data. So if you want to sort of demonstrate statistical analysis, this is a good way of having done that uh, based on your data to look for uh, patterns the eye can look for patterns here. I can see that there's certain clustering, but the eye can be tricked, as I said before, partly because there may be several dots on top of each other. For example, here in Twerton, there might be 10 dots on that particular uh, location, um, or, or just one. So here's two dots there, and so on. So I may be hiding data um, underneath each other. So the eye can sort of be fooled. There's four bits of data there. Uh, and the hotspot statistical test uh, will obviously see through that and show you your clusterings. Uh, it's also you know, technically statistically a statistical test of spatial relationships, statistical relevance. So this is what it's produced for me, this new layer, hotspots uh, Avon test. You can see a new layer has been drawn and my drawn boundaries. I can get rid of that. That's just the outline. I can keep it if I want, uh, but I'll remove it for the moment. So this is uh, what it's actually created. It shows me that there's a sort of clustering here. If I go under the uh, the key or legend, it says hot spot and cold spot. So these are statistical uh, words to represent whether these uh, dots, these clusters, are statistically uh, unusual in terms of being very high clusterings or whether they uh, are expected compared to the sort of distribution of dots across this whole area of Bath. So I can see there is an unusual hotspot uh, within central Bath uh, within clustering of crime. Uh, as I said, if I adjusted it for the central area, it would have shown me something slightly different. I could have looked at more detail at the central area and I could conduct another one to do that. Let's play around with the uh, look of this there a little bit and see what you can do with it. So it's um, plotted this at the moment on something called uh, GI bin fixed, so on, uh, which is a particular statistical variable it's created. Uh, but there are other things, some of which make, will make more sense than others. Um, if I pick a number of points, for example, this is a bit more plain English, uh, you can see here that it's going to have a little think about how to display this. Um, <laughs> you can see the grid here clearly, and uh, let's pick another way of showing it. Let's use a, a color shaded chloropleth style map. So you can see here that the darker areas are areas with a higher number of points where crimes have occurred. So you can see here there's 13 points, 13 crimes that occurred within the month of May in this particular dot. If I compare it to over here, there were no crimes over here, uh, and so on. Uh, pick another one, and uh, da -da -da, number of, uh, so there was zero over there, and so on. So um, there's two in that area. So what it's doing is literally counting the number of points. It's much more straightforward to understand uh, than a statistical test, and uh, it shows a slight different distribution and pattern, of course, as well. So if I go under Options here, um, I'm going to pick Classify Data, because I can have a colour ramp, but I quite like the idea of just having sort of intervals, so five intervals, and uh, I can play around with how this looks. So I've picked five classes here. You can see that it's created a key with five different colours in now rather than a colour ramp as such. Um, you can see how it's picking the colours based on these intervals, uh, 0 to 1, 1 to 4, 4 to 10 and so on. Uh, that's based on uh, um, a formula called natural breaks, which is a way the computer kind of devises a way of showing this data. You can equally, say if I go to equal interval for example, then it's going to change the way this map looks. And equally, uh, it knows that the highest value was uh, 30 crimes in one particular grid square here and the lowest was zero and it just splits them equally so you can see I get a very different look there. Each of these uh, systems are valid but they do show different things so it's worth uh, playing around with it um, uh, and seeing what they produce and how they produce the sort of uh, patterns and data. Um, uh, Quantile here sort of splits the 
uh, values that uh, occurred into uh, equal five equal brackets. There should be an equal number of uh, different uh, key colours here. Um, so, so those are some different ways of showing. You can see you get slightly different effects. That's uh, one thing worth playing around with to see how it uh, displays the data and how the, the scale and key comes around. You can see that clearly once you get over five number of points, uh, there aren't uh, that many locations, so they sort of cluster together. So maybe that emphasises the data perhaps better. Uh, I can change the symbols here to be something very sort of s stronger perhaps. I can go uh, a blue to red and I can say, well, at the moment blue is going to be the most crime red the least. I might flip that round that way and see how that looks. There we go. Okay, and so now we've got a sort of a slightly different pattern to clustering and see clusters here, but I can also see a few other clusters a bit more clearly than I could on the other map. Um, so if I'm happy with that, I could keep it at that. Uh, but that's not statistical, it's just a, a count of number of points, a sort of stats, I suppose, but not a statistical test. Uh, I could pick uh, a Z score here, which is a slightly different way of showing the data, um, which is a statistical test. And you can see here it's start already starting to play, display a bit differently to um, uh, how it did with the original data. It's quite quite a pleasing kind of looking map to show the pattern. It shows the cluster in the centre, but it also helps identify a couple of other areas of um, a reasonable clustering of crime, maybe not quite as high as the central area. And um, and it's based on the colour ramp there. So uh, if I classify the data, you'll see perhaps more clearly the scales that this is based on. Um, so this is basically a five and twelve. Um, it's basically what's called a, a GIZ score, so a form of Z score, um, which is basically looking at statistical deviation from the norm. So uh, if uh, the values are particularly higher or particularly lower than the uh, the average result for the number of values of crimes for a particular square. So again, these are slightly sort of complicated. You can look up uh, what these different things, scores kind of mean, uh, but they also you can just use them as a way of, uh, of visualizing data, as you can see here quite powerfully. Uh, so if I go for that one, I change the symbol again to my uh, blue to red color ramp and switch the colors around, you can see this is the kind of result I get. And I can see a little bit of more kind of patterns and refinement there. So let's click done. So you can see here, this is a hotspot. This is a you know, statistically uh, relevant map. You've got the uh, hotspot map there, slightly different way of showing it. Uh, you know, both are quite pleasing, both show it in a slightly different way, um, a slightly different system for showing that data. Um, so it's useful to, to perhaps think about using hotspot analysis as a way of kind of showing uh, distributions within your data. Um, might just try one more. Uh, well, we're doing well. Uh, data analyzing patterns. Let's just try this calculating density. Um, <coughs> so choose points to calculate density from. So the same idea. You're going to choose your crime data. Uh, account field is not relevant to this. Um, let's remind myself about the options. Study area. I think this is going to be the same idea of, uh, of clicking my actually I've already got one drawn I used the drawn boundaries I already did last time um, okay okay and this is going to produce density map so I'm going to do this uh, crime density map give it a name the same system as, as well using current map extent and showing the credits I mentioned before uh, just double check that. It says 766 records. It's going to take 0.776 of a credit, so not very much, and run the analysis there. So this is called a, uh, uh, a density map layer that's been created. And uh, I suppose the difference between this and the uh, heat map, I suppose, that created this, uh, I've got a lot more control over the the data and the way it's displayed, it's also creating technically another whole layer, so I'm able to sort of bring it in and out of different maps. Um, and again, it's quite a pleasing map, it's sort of a contour map essentially, uh, or isoline map, I should say. Um, but you can see here it's picked out the oops, clusters of high to low densities here, um, and done them as a contour style isoline map for high to low clusters of crime. See if I can pick one of these polygons. Oops, there we go. Um, and it's saying in that particular region, in that sort of uh, shape, there's. Hmm. Let's 
am I? It's okay, per square mile. Okay, so it's calculated per square mile. It would be if this data represented the average square mile uh, between 1,400 and 1,600 crimes calculated per square mile. So it's a uh, it's a density map as opposed to a heat map and so on. And again, I can uh, play around with that and the symbols for that and the way it looks to try and make it uh, look a little bit more pleasing. So there's perhaps less white area there. So. To investigate what the difference between classes and minimum and maximum value. Let's go on there. The maximum value per square mile. It won't change the way the map looks. It's just a slightly different way it's counting it. Um, let's go into the properties for that one and uh, classify data again, perhaps. Give it a few different intervals and come change the symbol for that. Try my. Let's go for a green to red this time. Flip the symbols again, so red means higher crime, and there you go. So that's a rather pleasing looking map as well. Um, okay, done. You can play around with that to your heart's content, but you can see there a, uh, a density map displaying crime uh, across Bath uh, per mile squared or kilometre squared, but it's quite mile squared. I think I probably could have set that for uh, kilometres if I look more carefully at the instructions. Uh, we've got a hotspot map there and you've got a density map there. So density maps are quickest and easiest to create, um, but it's worth having a look at uh, producing these other layers as well as ways of visualising your data. Um, once you finish that, uh, remember to save your map. And, uh, and then you'll have all that information saved within your map when you open it next time. Uh, these are all different layers and uh, just a tip on this, if you go to um, show item details uh, it will bring up the property to the layer and uh, you can then sh uh, share it publicly because at the moment these layers are created and they're private to you so if you want to share them up publicly that might be a problem. Um, let's just see if it reminds me if I double click this. Mm. No, first, yeah, okay, so it is doing it. So uh, having clicked and unclicked everyone there, it reminds me that these layers are private. And if I really do want to share it publicly, do I want to make these layers that I've just created public? And I can say yes, update sharing. So that's quite a nice quick feature. So you can know what I said about uh, going to the layer details. And that's just a quick way of changing it. And now anyone in the world will be able to see that uh, map with all the layers in and all its glory um, to uh, see your data if you so wish to share it that way. So it's quite a nice little tip as well. Um, so that shows you a little bit of uh, using some data analysis tools which can enhance the way you analyse patterns within data. And this can be used for all kinds of data. Uh, it doesn't have to be the crime data, but you get the, the general idea, pattern, uh, principle behind it. So that's part four, investigating crime, looking at hotspot analysis. And uh, we also looked at density analysis there in RGS Online. Uh, I'm Raphael Heath, and uh, this series of tutorials is supported by the Royal Geographical Society as part of the innovative teaching grant to uh, give schools and teachers ideas about how to conduct investigations into crime, particularly for A-level students and their investigations or IB students and uh, for extended essay and extended project qualifications and so on, high-level work.